Hi everybody, it's Marcy and Chunk again. And today we are going to teach you a very fun, cool looking stitch called the honeycomb. Love, love, love the honeycomb. It looks great, especially on blankets, but I've done a few purses with it, like a, you know, eight by 10 bags. Looks really great on that and on pillows too. So let's get started and dive into the honeycomb stitch. Ready? Yes, I'm ready, Chunk. Chunk gets excited, especially when I use my fluffy gray yarn because he thinks I'm making him a girlfriend. <laughs> Sorry if you guys don't like my sense of humor, but I am a jokester. I was raised by a family of jokesters, and that's just how we get through life. So with the honeycomb stitch, you want to make sure when you're casting on that you cast on multiples of four. And I suggest you write out your pattern like I do. That way you don't mess up and you can kind of cross it off as you go like a grass blanket. So let's say you're going to do multiples of four plus two for your end stitches. So your one here, one here, and then whatever's in between has to be a multiple of four. So I'm going to cast on 18 just to give you, you know, like a swatch size of a blanket. So it doesn't take me two hours to get through it all. Actually, a full size blanket would take me a lot longer than that. But... So this will give us, you know, just a, a big enough size to where you can see it. So four, each four stitches will give us a honeycomb and then we'll have our two end stitches. So let's get started again. Um, this is a, what we call a yarn eater blanket. Anything with a, a thick, heavy stitch, like a cable knit or a herringbone or this one will use more yarn, just a little bit more, not like five skeins more but or not double, just a little bit more than what you would normally use. And you want to knit a little tighter than usual so you don't have gaping holes in between your pattern. So I'm just going to cast on 18 like I normally do and always do three finger big loops, okay? So that you don't have your end curling up because we don't like that. So let's quickly cast on 18. And if you can't remember the exact way to cast on, I do it really slow in my beginner blanket tutorial. You should always watch that first if you're new. So, I'm also used to doing these, instead of making YouTube tutorials, I used to go live in my group and or do Zoom meetings where I would train people and I'm used to interaction. So kind of hard for me to sit here in a quiet room and not have anybody to interact with because I'm a people person. So I talk a lot in my videos. Again, you can always mute me. And if you need a pattern and I don't have it posted in a writing, you can always comment or come to the Facebook group and comment there or message me and I'm glad to write it out for you. All right, let's see how many. I need 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Twelve. Always hold this part of the stitch. 13. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. I probably didn't need mine to be this big because I'm doing a small swatch of a blanket, but I'm just so used to making them this big because I usually do big blankets. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. Make sure with the, these kind of blankets, you won't, you don't want to have an extra stitch or be short a stitch. So one, and I always count them again after I knit here. Now this first row can be smaller. Okay. The rest of your row should be about one to one and a half inches. So you can measure them. I'm just, again, I'm so used to doing it. I know. Yep. One and a half. I just you won't always have to measure things and 
count and write out patterns. Once you start knitting, you will be hooked. We all are. <laughs> and you'll be doing blanket after blanket. A lady posted in my group today. She's like, I just finished this blanket and I took about 10 minutes to admire it and on to the next one. <laughs> so fun that we just can't wait to start the next one. I am also in the process of creating a brand new stitch that nobody has ever done before. All right, let's check these. And I'm going to keep testing it out a little bit and post it in the group and see if people like it. If they do, I will, of course, make a tutorial and you'll be able to see it here for the first time. All right, let's hurry up and get to 18. I was going to do this first is what I meant to do. I'm sorry. I was going to cast on my 18 and start from the video from there, but so used to doing this. So you can fast forward this part and just get to the part of the chapter where it says start the pattern. I'll try to remember to label it that. I'm trying to make them shorter as I go. My first few tutorials, you know, like the beginner, beginner one and the herringbone, which I usually recommend people try the herringbone as their first uh, non-knit stitch. Um, so I try to make the videos faster too. All right, let's count again. Always, always count your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Counting the hanging stitch. All right, so this is where we are going to start the honeycomb pattern. And this type of stitch is something that you will do, these crossover stitches, you'll do them in a lot of patterns. I'm going to do a crisscross stitch and a, um, a cable knit, and they're all crisscross. A lot of people will tell you that you are going to knit the back one first and the front one first. Um, they have different ways of explaining it. Uh, for me, it's just easier. Okay, so you would knit the first stitch. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but I usually drop my end stitch, so I'm just going to leave that one. Um, for me, it's easier. What I'm going to do is crisscross to the left. I know that. So I'm just going to grab my two stitches, pull this one to the left, the inside one over. Okay, and then you're going to knit through it, hold them together and knit through it. We're going to do this a lot, so don't worry. Hold it together and knit through them. Okay. All right. So then the next four. So your honeycomb is a section of four. Your next four. So see how that crossed over right there? You'll be able to see it a lot better here in a minute. Your next four, you want to cross them to the left. So you're going to go right and left and then right. Or I'm sorry, you're opposite of me. So left and then right, left and then right left and then right all the way across so grab your next two stitches now i need to go to the left so i'm going to take this one cross it to the left and pull the other one over and then i just hold that together and knit through them again don't worry i know this gets confusing in the beginning but i'm going to do a whole bunch of them so that you can see it really well all right so and see that this one's going that way and this one's going that way and then you have the two behind it. Another way people do it is they say take these two stitches. So again, this is going to crisscross to the left. Um, so they'll say this is stitch one and this is stitch two. Knit stitch two first. Pull stitch two over and knit through that one. And that's going to go on the front. And then you have stitch one behind it. Okay. So either way you like to do it, I find it easier. Instead of saying stitch one and stitch two in the back and the front and all that, I just grab it and I know it's got to cross over. And I want the one that's crossing to be in the front. It's just so much easier for me to remember it that way. So I'm going to teach it that way. And if it's too confusing for you, um, you can do it with the front and back. And there's also lots of other great YouTubers out there that I've learned from that, um, you know, explain 
this stitch in different ways that it's just easier for us to remember. Another good thing to do is I don't have my trusty hair clip, but to make a marker, like here's your end stitch, right? And then here's four. The next four is your first honeycomb. So you could put like something in between and I'll stick my lighter here for now. Okay. So then you've got these four as a comb and then these four are a comb. Okay. So that you don't lose track of where you're at. All right. So now I know I'm starting four more stitches. Okay. Another section. This one's going to go to the left and this one's going to go to the right. Okay. Really helped me to, you know, leave markers like that. There's little plastic clips called stitch markers that you can get that will help with that too. I love to use hair clips for everything because I've always got a million of them laying around. All right. And then these two are going to go to the left or to the to my right. <laughs> It'll make sense here in a minute once we, once we get going. There we go. All right. So that was another section of four. Okay. So I've got one, two, three, four. That's one comb. One, two, three, four. That's another honeycomb. One, two, three, four. That's another honeycomb. I should have five stitches left. My hanging end stitch and four more to make my next honeycomb. So grab your stitches, the side of your honeycomb going this way. So grab them, cross that one over. Okay, the one that's crossing over is always going to go in front. Just easier to remember it that way. Okay. And I want the other side. So study the picture if you're, you know, I suggest even right now maybe stopping the video, going back and looking at the picture. And really studying what the stitch looks like. Maybe even print out a copy of it if you can. So that it makes sense to you what I'm doing here. But again, as soon as I get through my first like comb shape, you'll see. Alright, so there's my second set of four here. Sorry. One, two, those went that way. This one went that way. Okay, I'm actually going to grab stitch markers really quick. Give me just one minute. Okay, I'm back. So I couldn't find my official stitch markers, so I used my hair clip hack. <laughs> and what I did was just placed these in between the sections of four that are going to be your honeycomb. Okay, and then want to end this one so that I know that these four stitches in between here are a comb. Just to help out in the beginning. And then you knit your end stitch one time. As I was After I did these four, I knitted this once. But I'm not going to knit it again going back this way. Because I like that braided border. Okay, so we did our first set of crisscrosses for the bottom part of the comb. Now the next part is just a straight knit stitch. So some people go right into crossing back over. But I like a more solid looking comb. So I extend them. And I'll show you again what that means. So this next row, which is going to be your row um, two, because you don't count the cast on row, is going to be just knitting all the way through. Just a regular row knit stitched all the way across. No crisscrossing at all. And always make sure that you've got all your stitches. You can even count as you're knitting to make sure that you've got 18. I suggest starting off with a smaller blanket size. Don't do a cast on of 40 or anything like that. Unless you're feeling brave and you just want to tackle it, go right ahead. Because it's good experience and you can always take it apart. The great thing about these, we can always take it apart. We don't want to, but we can. <laughs> Alright, so now we're just knitting. Regular knit stitch. Make sure that you get every stitch. I always hold that next one because these here can drop back a little bit. The ones that are in the center of the comb can drop back a little bit. I know it probably seems really confusing right now. Like I'm not explaining it well, but it's going to all come together here in a minute. And I'm going to do a few rows of them. All right, so we'll knit all the way through. This is going to be like the side of the honeycomb, I guess you would call it.
Okay, so that's my there. This is my end stitch. Okay, and again, my bottom row is starting to tighten up, but it might not tighten up all the way because I made them the three finger widths, and this is not a very big blanket, so you don't have to do that if you're doing it like a tiny baby blanket. All right, so I knitted my end stitch for going that way, but I'm not going to knit it for going that way. I'm going to start my comb, okay? So here's my four stitches. You can even move these up as you go if you want so that you know where you're going to be crisscrossing at and that you don't accidentally crisscross the wrong four stitches. Okay, this is not necessary to do, but just a little trick that helped me in the beginning. Okay, so now we've shaped the bottom part of our comb going that way. And we've got one stitch going straight. Now we need to bring it back in this way. Kind of looks like a stop sign in a way. So I, down here, I crisscrossed that way. So now I want to crisscross this way. So I'm going to grab my stitch and pull it that way. Okay, and pull the other one over behind it. And then I just knit them in that order. Okay, so I'll show you again. This is the start of my four. Sorry, I got a lot of stuff on my table today. The start of my four. This is my end stitch. I'll leave them hanging. All right, this is my set of four. And I want to cross over this way. So I'm going to take my first stitch, cross it over, grab the other one, and bring it behind it. And just hold on to them. And then you just knit. Just knit in that order. You no know, trying to remember if I knit the second one first or first one second and all that stuff. It just got too confusing for me. It took me a long time to figure out how to, how to do these. Okay, so now here's the other one. These two stitches, it was going that way. And now I need the top part to go that way. So I'm like, okay, pull that one over. And the one that you're pulling over is always going to be on the top. It's going to be in front. And the other one will go behind it back here. And it's easy to miss these. So yeah, just hang on to them and make sure that you've knitted them. Okay, now you can kind of see we have a honeycomb shape. Let me hold that a little closer. See? Here's our bottom. Going this way, straight, and then that way. This one to the left, straight, and then to the right. Okay? We're going to do the same thing with this next section. One, two, three, four. All right, make sure I've got them all correctly. This one from the one that's in the back can trip you up a little bit, so you want to make sure you don't miss it. Okay. Bring your working yarn behind. And this is my next set of four stitches. One, two, three, four, in between my clips. Okay. And I need to go this way. So I'm going to grab my two stitches. Pull this one over, pull this one that way, and then just knit them in order. The working yarn behind it. For some reason, I really love to do this with pink yarn. Okay, and then we've got our next two set of stitches. I need it to go this way, so I'm going to grab this one and pull it this way. Because I can't pull this one this way, then what would I do with that one, right? So I need to pull this one over and then leave this one behind it, okay? So they're crisscrossed to, the, to my left. And right after I finish this next row, I'll kind of explain the pattern again that you can write it out. All right, so now my working yarn is back here. A little stitch marker there out of the way, which you don't have to use. Now we're at the second honeycomb. It was going that way. One straight. Now we need to go that way. So I'm going to take these two stitches. I want this one to go over. So I'm going to bring it over and then grab the other one. Hold on to them. Get my working yarn back here. That's kind of behind. It's confusing because it's attached to the stitch that went this way. So it's kind of just dangling there. You got to hold it up. Okay, I'll take the stitch marker out and show you. See how it's kind of dangling there and behind? You got to pull that over and hold it up, okay? You're not going to knit it again, but your working yarn's attached to it. And you need to knit your next two crossover stitches.
Okay. So if I'm going to put my stitch marker back, make it easier for me. I always like to keep it in groups of four, two, three, four. Especially when you're explaining it in a tutorial, you kind of can get lost easily. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This I did the first half of that comb going that way. Now I need the side of it to go this way. So I'm going to grab my two stitches. I want it to go that way. I'm going to pull that one over that way and that one this way. And my yarn's right here, so I know I have to knit this one first. Okay, so now I've finished my third comb, and I'm on my fourth. Okay, there's my marker. There's one, two, three, four stitches, and then my end stitch. I'm going to remove the marker for a minute so you can see, see how that's kind of dangling back there again. So hold on to it. Even though you're not knitting this one, you just want to hold it forward. Okay, so this is my side of that one, and it's going to go this way. I'm going to grab them like this. And then hold on to them as I pull my yarn through. All right. Excuse my cat in the background. She's trying to get somebody to play with her. This is the other side of the comb. I need it to go this way. So I'm going to grab my stitch and pull it over. And pull the other. Get that out of the way. And pull the other one that way. Okay. Okay. This will make sense as we go here. I might actually post one done in another color. And then we have your hanging end stitch here. We're just going to knit it sideways like that. So it's coming up. Just kind of hold it over and knit through it. It'll turn in sideways. Okay, so now we have our first comb, complete set of combs. Kind of hard to see, but I want to put my stitch marker back there. And then one here, one, two, three, four, in the middle. Okay, so now starting to look like a honeycomb. Hopefully, this color is. Okay, for you. And then the next row, before you start another set of combs, you want just a row of knit stitches. So you're going to, the pattern is going to go, you're going to be, it's going to be the bottom part of the comb. So that you're going to be crisscrossing left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. Okay, and then your next row, row two, is going to be a row of knit stitches. And then row three coming back is going to be the opposite. Instead of left, right, it's going to be right, left, right, left. Okay, they're going to go the opposite that they did down here. And then another row of knit stitches. And then another row of crisscrosses going in the opposite direction. And then another row of knit stitches, just like that, all the way across. So again, when you're doing your first one, it helps to uh, write out the pattern as you go. All right, so I knitted my end stitch once, and I've got my four set of combs, which doesn't matter now because I am just going to knit through them all. So I'm going to take these out for a minute because I want to make sure that I don't miss any stitches that are hanging behind. Because as you can see, they kind of flop around when you're doing this. In the back of a honeycomb, almost ends up looking like flowers. It's really pretty, too. All right, so let's knit through all of these. I'll help them lay flatter. Some people don't do this row of knits in between their combs. And um, it just makes it look a little crowded, I think, if you don't. I've always done mine this way. Knit all the way across. Make sure you're not missing any stitches. Again. You know, if you start off with a smaller one like this, make sure that you can just count them as you go. And if you didn't count 18 like you cast it on, then you know you missed one. But I just kind of hold my hand behind it and make sure I'm flattening up the stitches. Okay. 
Okay, knit your end stitch once. And then we're going to start a new set of combs. There. Can you see how this is looking so far? I'm actually going to flip it this way for you. Because I can see it better there. And you can see, and there will always be in your honeycombs, there's going to be a hole like that. That's just where you've crossed it over. And there's really not much you can do about them, but you can't like see it from here. But you'll see it when you look up under the blanket. <laughs> so just don't think you did anything wrong. Alrighty. So I'm gonna do this one a little faster. I'm gonna do another set. All right, so skip this stitch. And now I am going to go. I'm starting the bottom of my comb. So they're gonna go this way. I'll grab my two stitches. I want it to go that way. So I'm gonna pull that one over and grab the other one and pull it over behind it. Okay, make sure that it's flat. Sorry, <laughs> pull it over behind it, hold them two together, and knit through them. If I mess up, it's just because I'm trying to talk at the same time. <laughs> okay, now I've got my other side of it. It's going to go that way. So I'm going to grab my two stitches, pull it over, grab the other one, pull it this way. Sorry, I had to make sure I wasn't grabbing the wrong stitch there. Find your working yarn. <laughs> you don't want to hold them both together. It's fine. I just do so I don't drop one. Okay, now we're going to start our other one. Okay, this is the bottom. Starting a new comb, so they're going to go to the left. There you working on. Pull it through. Pull it through. I made these pretty small. Okay, this is the other side of the comb. I need it to go that way. So. I'm going to grab this one, pull it that way, grab the other one, pull it this way. Hold on to them. And then knit through. Okay, and knit through. I will try to remember to type out the pattern for you in the comments here for this one. All right, starting another comb. I need it to go that way. So I'm going to pull that stitch over and that stitch that way. Just remember the stitch that's crossing over it in that direction, you want it in front, and the other one pull it behind it. Okay, there's the other side of it. I need it to go that way. So I'm going to grab one, pull that one that way, and the other one in the other direction behind it. So it will stay crossed. Okay. All right. Now I'm on my last comb. One, two, three, four, and five. Make sure. One, two, three, four, and my fifth will be my hanging stitch. So again, this comb, is, I need the bottom to go that way. So I'm going to pull them knit through them. Get to this one. It's the other side of the comb it needs to go that way. Grab a hold of them, pull it that way, pull that one that way. Okay. I'm trying not to say right and left, right and left because it's going to look different on camera. Because <laughs> it's reversed. All right. And then. Pull that through. Okay, so completed the bottom part of the comb. Skip that stitch. Now we're going to do a row of knits. Oops, I'm running out of yarn. Here, let me grab another skein. 
I mean, I can't reach it. Hang on one second. Okay, sorry about that. A little unprepared. All right, so I left my end stitch. I knitted my first four. And we were just knitting across. I did these going that way. And then this knit across. So sorry, I just always want to double check and make sure that I got all my stitches there in the back and that I didn't drop any. All right. Okay, so I'll finish knitting my knit stitch row. Every other row is going to be a knit stitch row, whether it be the knit stitches for the side of the comb or the knit stitches for the top of the comb to separate them. Okay. Always check the back for that dropping hanging stitch. The one that you knitted behind when you crossed over. Most common mistake on the honeycomb is missing that stitch when you go back across. Yeah, this one kind of flopped forward, I mean, and this one's kind of hanging back there. That's just from doing the crossover. I'm going to teach you guys the crisscross stitch. I love it. Looks more like a basket weave to me. Some people do call it the basket weave. There's something really cool about the honeycomb that I'll show you that you'll see here when we're done. Okay. So I did my bottom part of the comb going outwards, and then I did the sides going upwards, and now I need to go inwards. So I just get my first stitch. I need to go inwards, so I always grab two stitches, and I needed to go in. So I can't take this one and pull it in, because then what am I going to do with that one, right? So that's what makes it less confusing for me. I'm like, hmm, okay, I needed to go in, so what do I do? Which one do I cross over? Okay, well, I can take this one in. And that means I still got to do something with that one. I can't just leave it hanging there. So I'm going to hold them together and knit them. Just think it's a much easier to remember that than the other way. All right, now I've got two more and I need it to go that way. So I can't make this one go that way because it's just, you know, it's the inside stitch. So I need the outside stitch to go that way. So that means inside stitch has to go the other way because it's a crisscross. All right. I think you're probably starting to get the hang of it now. I just repetitively explain myself. All right. So that was our first comb. One, two, three, four. And now we're on the second comb. All right. I need it to go that way. Sorry. Stitch just hanging there. I'm sorry. I need it to go the, this way. That's the top part of the comb. So. Pull that over like that. Remind me to show you guys the pink purse I did with the honeycomb stitch. I get so many compliments on that. I'll do some purse tutorials too. Just need to remind me. <laughs> Come to the group and say, Marcy, show us how to make a purse. And if I can't do it, my girl Javea can do it. She's really good at purses and stuffies and uh, surface crocheting. She's got her own channel. I collaborate with a few other YouTubers in my group, and they post their videos too. So you'll be able to find their channel. Oh, this one is just disagreeing with me here. Made it too loose. Okay. I need this one to go in. Oh, I think my battery's getting low on my phone. I hope not. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm having the worst luck tonight. Let me just grab my charger and <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I got it to where I can plug it in and use it. All right, but I lost, stayed where I left off. Okay, 
um, on my last comb because I've got five stitches left, my hanging end, and then my other four. Okay, this is the top part of the comb, so I need it to go in this way. Like a V. So I'm going to take these two stitches, pull that one over. I need it to go to my right. Okay, and this is the other side. I need it to go this way to my left. Pull the stitch to the left that can get pulled to the left. The other one couldn't. Another way you can remember it. My floppy hanging in stitch. Alright. So we've completed two combs. Okay, so we'll try to look at it from here. Because what's really cool about this is that when you make your combs here and here, by default, what's in between makes its own comb. So no matter where you look at it, you've got combs everywhere. <laughs> See, like I, this is not one that I made. This is just what ended up in between these two. Over here makes its own comb. So it makes a gigantic honeycomb pattern. Okay, I'm going to knit a little more to the end and then show you how to cast off. So just remember, knit a row. And then you do the bottom part of your comb going out. So from over here, you're going to go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And then you want to do the middle part of the comb going straight. So knit all the way across. And then when you come back, top part of the comb needs to comb in like that. So you're going to go left, right, the opposite that you did down here. Left, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so confusing on camera. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay. And then a row of knits in between to separate them. And then you start your new comb, the bottom, going left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. A row of straight knit stitches. And then right, left. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Another row of knits. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Row of knits. Just keep doing that and you'll have a beautiful honeycomb pattern. Um, but let me finish this up and do a few more and then I'll come back and show you how to cast off. Okay, I did another set and I'm back. And then I finished off this comb and then I did one row of knit stitches, which would have been what you would keep going with anyways if you were going to start another section um but i need that there to cast off because i don't want to cast off at the top of a comb but as you can see now it looks a lot better so this is my end row this was the first set of combs that i did going upwards okay so look next to it it made its own combs in between also i just love this pattern it's like a fence almost <laughs> isn't that nice and again, you're going to have holes there. It's just, you know, they're just there from crossing over. <laughs> so, and I like even how the back looks. Looks like flowers. You could call it a flower pattern on the back. So casting off is the same way that you do um, any other blanket. It's, it's no different. But I just wanted to show you what it looked like at the end. So we're just going to grab our two stitches, face them together, pull your working yarn behind it. Push some yarn through them stitches so that you can pull out a loop, okay? Because you need a, two loops all, at all times. Grab that one, make it long enough to reach over without really, like, you know, squishing your pattern so that it'll spread out. I make it loop long enough to reach over really without pulling too much. And, again, practice makes perfect. You'll do this on every blanket, and you'll get to see what you need for your size stitches to get over without uh, squishing your blanket together and making it curl up on the end. Okay, we're almost done. Make sure you're checking behind and getting those stitches that you crisscrossed because it's really easy to miss them, okay? Just check as you go and just pull it back through. Mm, yep, that's my next one. Combine two stitches, basically. This is my next one. Yep, making 
sure I'm not missing one. Throw it through. Let's make a cute little, like, American Girl doll blanket or something, or even a, for a couple of Barbies. <laughs> End up giving all the stuff to my niece because my daughter is a teenager now. And we don't have any toys laying around anymore. So my niece gets loaded up with all this stuff that I experiment on. <laughs> she loves it though. Everybody loves chunky iron. Especially the blankets. Okay. I'll try to remember to post a picture in the comments of that purse. And it, the honeycomb pattern, and I did it in a really soft pink color. So as you can see, you get that braided look across the top when you do this. So that matches your cast on from the bottom. Okay, almost there. Got these two, face them together. Make sure that you um, have two and a half to three widths of yarn left just back and forth when you are knitting and you want to know if you can keep going or keep going, or, you know. <laughs> All right, so I've got that. Cut a little bit. I like to take this loop and pull it back really small. I leave my finger there so I don't lose it. If it doesn't stick out really big on the side. Casting off is the same on every blanket. And then weave it through. And then you can just keep weaving it through. And tugging and pulling. Grab this. And just kind of fold it back now. You're done. It'll all do that on its own eventually anyways. So don't worry if you forget to do that. But look at that. Beautiful honeycomb pattern. And then we still... Got our braided sides. You can still do that with most patterns. And that way it looks the same all the way around. You've got that braided edge everywhere. Okay. In the back again. Nice. Nice. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or come to the group. Like, subscribe, comment. Links are there that you need. And we we'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have a ball.